I would now like to call to order the meeting of the directors of the New York Convention Center Development Corporation for Wednesday, March 11th, 2020. I'd like to note for the record that this meeting is being webcast. The directors have received the relevant written materials in advance of today's meeting and are free to ask questions at any time. Please note as well that we welcome public comments on the items on the agenda. However, to ensure maximum opportunity for participation, speakers representing themselves may speak up to two minutes each, and those representing groups may speak up to four minutes with one speaker per group. Speakers' comments may address only the items considered at today's meeting. Uh, before we begin with the substantive portion of the meeting, I would ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict or conflict of interest with respect to any of the items on today's agenda. If so, I would like you to please make an appropriate disclosure on the record at this time. We will then be sure that you may recuse yourselves from any discussion or vote with regard to such item or items. Any? No. There being none for the record? Okay. There are no conflicts or the foregoing have been noted for the record. Our first order of business is the approval of the minutes of the director's meeting of June 13, 2019. Any questions, additions, or deletions on the minutes? There being none, could I have a motion to, to approve the minutes? Mr. Sunas moves. Second. Any second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And hearing none, that passes. Okay. Um, I guess, Robin, are we ready to go to the action items at this point? We are, well, yes. The first one would be the adoption of the budget. Okay. Do you want to take that on now? I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, as the directors will remember, uh, every year uh, in March, before April 1, uh, which is the turn of the, uh, the state fiscal year, we adopt annual budgets, both an operating budget and a capital budget. Uh, for, the, for the past three years, uh, during the, uh, ever since the expansion started, uh, these budgets have looked remarkably the same. Uh, and for this coming year, uh, this, uh, the, which is now the, will be the fourth year of our construction, this budget also looks remarkably the same as the three that you have uh, seen before. Uh, next year, uh, the budgets will be quite different uh, because we will have at that time completed most of our expansion work. Um, but in the meantime, for this coming fiscal year, uh, yes, not, well, we're doing more than knock on wood, but uh, working very hard, as you'll hear in a moment. Um, but, uh, recall, rec recall, that the, uh, recall that the operating budget is funded from uh, CCDC unrestricted funds, and re recall that the capital budget is funded uh, mostly through the New York State $1 billion appropriation, uh, but also th through proceeds from the hotel unit uh, secured fee, the proceeds on the uh, hotel unit. Uh, as you'll see, if you look at the operating budget, uh, uh, very similar to last year, uh, slight bump up in salaries. I promise I haven't spent all that in one place. Um, and uh, the, uh, the non-personnel services, including insurance, et cetera, uh, roughly the same. So the operating budget, roughly the same. And then if you turn to the capital budget, um, also roughly the same. Uh, and of course, the vast bulk of this uh, capital budget is the uh, construction uh, contracts that this board has already authorized. The uh, largest of which, of course, is the expansion um, with Lindley's Turner, um, and then, of course, the transformer building with the Tishman folks. Um, so we, I'm, of course, happy to uh, answer any questions. Uh, but with that, I would ask for adoption of the annual budgets. Anyone have any questions? It's pretty straightforward. Thank you, Robin. Um, OK, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Sunis moves. He's got a second. second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposition. Your budget is passed, Robin. Thank you. Next item. Uh, why do we, yes, why don't we skip the president's why don't we skip report the, now? I thought we agreed to do that already. Yes, Sorry. and, and, and uh, I will go to the final action item, and therefore, if, uh, if the directors need to leave, um, uh, I can bring them up to speed on the president's report as necessary. Okay. Uh, this next action item, uh, uh, and its next and final uh, action item, is uh, in connection with the transformer building. And the, uh, the roughly $100 million project that is the electrical battery for uh, the Javits, both the existing and, um, and the new expansion. Um, you will all recall that the phase one of that project is done, which was the electrification of that. Uh, it is now supplying the electricity uh, to the existing uh, Javits. Um, it is actually also supplying construction power to the ongoing expansion, uh, and it is it is capable and ready to supply the expansion when the expansion is ready to be electrified. Um, 
there is a phase two to that uh, construction, which is the building of generator capacity, emergency and, uh, uh, and generator capacity, which Javits has never had before. Um, that phase two is ongoing. Uh, it is to be completed approximately this summer. It should be uh, by late summer or so, should be done. At which point that transformer project will complete, be completely done. And recall that the, the transformer building uh, is not directly part of the critical path. Obviously, it needs to be done by a year from now, next March, when the expansion is done. But uh, 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 getting it done in advance of that uh, is not part of the critical path. So I have two things that I would like to talk to the directors about in terms of uh, making some modifications to the contract with, um, uh, with Tishman, who is the developer of that project. Um, I, I want to start backwards from what's in your in your minute in your materials. Excuse me. Let me talk about the money first. Just as just as an overview to remind the directors, uh, we entered into a contract with um, Tishman several years ago. The GMP is ninety three point five million dollars. Um, that includes a four four point two million dollar uh, Tishman contingency. But, and on top of that 93.5, there was also a $3 million owner contingency. So at the time we signed the contract, the contract was 96.5. Uh, about a, a, ye a year or so thereafter, uh, in order to be careful um, in terms of our budget, um, I asked the directors for an authorization for an additional $2 million um, as necessary. And that, bring, and that was authorized, and that brings the total contract value to 98.5. I am here to tell you that I believe we will finish that project within the 98.5, but there is a wrinkle. Um, the, the way that the contract is set forth, and this was in the materials that you reviewed some time ago, is that um, with, the, uh, with the Tishman contingency of $4.2 million, the dollars from that that are not spent will be credited 50% to Tishman and 50% to CCDC. At this point, we're nearing the end of the road. We, we are anticipating that CCDC will have a fairly substantial credit from that. Um, and therefore, between what we need to expend to finish this project and the credit, we believe we will be below the previously authorized 98.5. However, since we will not know until the end of the project what the credit is, it is possible that over the next couple of months, I will need to sign a change order, which will technically take us over the $98.5 million previously authorized amount. So we've kicked it around with council, and we thought the better part of discretion was to explain this all to you and let you know. So as a cushion, uh, uh, as a cushion, but with the expectation that on a net basis, we will still be within the 98.5. I'm asking the directors to authorize an amendment to this contract of an additional 600,000 uh, on a gross basis. Uh, again, with the expectation that on a net basis, we will still be within um, what we had previously uh, authorized. And if that is not the case, obviously I will come back to the directors. So that's, that's the first modification that we're requesting. And the second modification we're requesting is a time modification. Um, the directors will recall and know that um, this project is somewhat complicated by being the smaller of the two projects on the site. Um, the Lindley's Turner expansion, as you will hear uh, in the president's report, if you can stay, uh, is going very well on time, on budget. Uh, but there are certain pieces of that that need to take priority over the um, transformer, the, 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 uh, the generator work, uh, the Tishman work. And at the same time, remember that uh, the, uh, the existing ramps uh, that feed Javits today for all the shows, the trucks uh, loading and unloading, they'll go, those go right through the transformer space. And we are charged, uh, and I hope Alan uh, agrees that we have, uh, we have uh, honored our task of keeping Javits fully operational. But that, what that means is that between Lindley's Turner and uh, ongoing OC operations, there are times that we have to work the, the, the Tishman generator uh, work in, into different slots. Um, and as a result of that, um, what I'm asking the directors for is to uh, allow me to amend the contract so that our, our conclusion date would be on or about September 1. Um, a, a, a lot of that is, is, 
it, I should say a part of that is LLT and OC. Part of that is when we finished the phase one electrification last year, there were certain issues with Con Ed, and it took a bit longer than we had anticipated with Con Ed to electrify uh, phase one. So between all of those, um, all of those events that are happening at the transformer site, um, I'm asking the directors for authorization to extend the com uh, completion date until September 1. Uh, I will tell you three things. One is that um, I expect it to be earlier, probably not a lot earlier, but I hope and expect that it will be somewhat earlier. Number two, uh, the, the arrangement that has been made with Tishman Construction means that we have no extra cost. There will be no more general conditions as is reported in your, uh, in your materials. Um, and number three, this will have no impact on the, the larger project, the Lindley's Turner project budget or schedule for completion in March of 21. So with that as explanation and as set forth in your materials, I would ask for the directors to authorize these modifications to the contract. And it will have no effect on ongoing operations here in the building? No. Yeah. Okay. So, Robin, just a couple of things. Um, do you, you know, I, I, what is the current completion date? The current contract completion date is April 30th. Okay. So that's being extended to September 1st, 2020. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Now, just, just, uh, so I, what I hear you saying is that you have more than enough money. In fact, you may have a credit yes. at the end of the day to complete everything. Yes. But you want us to increase the overall amount for the contract from 98.5 to 99.1? Yes. Okay. I have no problem with that except the idea that doesn't that invite the whoever's doing it to basically use up that money or or am I just um, um, I, I mean think just, just speak to that because yeah, yeah. That, that's, I, I, that's what worries me. Fine. If you put more money on the table, there's more money to be spent. I, I think the, well, I would say I would have two responses to that. Number one is we are, we are near completion. On this Understood. Project. Good, good. And, and that's all good. And the, been the, 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 ex the, expected, the expected expenses are pretty well set okay. at this point. Um, and the second thing is remember that, as I said, the, the credit gets shared 50 50. Understood that also. So that would also yeah. be a, a motive for, um, for Tishman okay. to minimize the expenditures out of that pot because they get 50 cents of every saving okay. dollar. Understood. I understood that. All right. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. I think otherwise we'll entertain a motion. Uh, is it one motion or two motions? Uh, just one motion for okay. the for the modifications. I'm happy to. Okay, second. second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, passed. Okay, so we've done, we the, done with the, and the two items? two action items. So right. uh, uh, I, again, I apologize for the lateness of the start of the meeting. Um, if there are directors who need to go, uh, you, you you are welcome to go. Although we'll give a, a president's report. Um, I will just start right from the top by turning it over to Gus Mamis, whom I think all of you have met, our um, project director. And Gus, if you could give us a construction update, I would appreciate it. Sure. Good afternoon. Um, there's been quite a bit of excitement over the past few months in terms of activity and work in place. Uh, if I just refamiliarize yourself, refamiliarize you with the project um, with six key components, the truck mushroom building uh, on the left-hand side of the project, two, the spine, which is back of house, kitchens, public toilets, and that sort of thing. Three is a transformer building, which Robin mentioned provides power to both the uh, existing Javits and of course the expansion. Uh, it's already started, as Robin mentioned, to provide power to some of the air handling units. We can, so we were able to heat the interior of the building during the winter months to continue work on the interiors. Uh, and of course, to maintain temperature during the summer. So. Um, the wet activities can progress without impact. Uh, and of course, um, four, five, and six, which are the meeting room special event space on the top floor and the future event space on top of the, um, on top of the truck mushroom building, which will house the farm, pavilion, and greenhouse. Um, Robin mentioned the transformer building, so I'm just, just gonna go back to that for a moment. Um, he mentioned about the ongoing work regarding the emergency generators. The emergency generators were set uh, quite some time ago. The last phase of the project involves providing the fuel supply for the emergency generators. The, the demolition since the last meeting, the demolition work has been completed. The foundation's work was completed. The tanks were set and the fuel system is near, is complete. We're in the process of being testing right now. We've had the first test this last week and preparing for secondary tests. 
Um, in addition to that, the mechanical work that's associated with the fuel system of the emergency generator is progressing. And we're getting ready for some pre-inspections and startups um, during the month of May. What is the fuel for the emergency backup? Diesel. Looking at the northwest view of the of the of the structure, you can see the um, the uh, building is beginning to get enclosed. This these photos are about a week and so old. So, uh, so some of the paneling, the exterior panels and curtain wall system that you've seen, have progressed a lot more than the photos shown here. Uh, as of now, the project is 73% complete based on requisitions and work in place. Uh, as of the end of February, the steel is 99% complete and the only items left to be installed are the hoist runs and where temporary stairs were installed um, in leave outs. Um, the remaining of the steel to be erected is, uh, besides that, um, some minor steel for the atrium area. Other than that, the steel is basically complete and banker the steel erector is in the process of demobilizing and leaving the site. The atrium, the, which is the entrance to the expansion coming off 11th Avenue, um, is uh, well underway. As I mentioned, the steel is complete and we're getting ready for the um, installation of a quite substantial skylight. Uh, the crane will be delivered to the site next week and all the preliminary work for the installation of the skylight will begin the latter part of next week once we have the crane signed off and all the approvals in place. Um, the concrete, as you can see, is pretty much done and the, um, the work is, is uh, ongoing. The expo space, level three, which will eventually be tied into the expansion, to the existing expand, um, uh, exposition space, as you can see, has progressed quite a bit. Uh, between the drywall that's being installed around the perimeter. The majority of the focus has been on the overhead work. Uh, we're painting all the trusses with intermessive paint to give it the proper fire rating, as well as there's two layers of mechanical <coughs> system that's being installed above the trusses. Um, the first layer is well underway and the second layer will shortly follow. Right now, the masonry work throughout the buildings is 71% complete and it is slightly ahead of schedule. The meeting rooms on the fourth floor, again, uh, you can see the trusses, the steel being uh, installed for the, um, uh, for the partitions, the vertical partitions, and with a key focus on drywall and mechanical systems. Not very exciting photos, but that's been the majority of the focus of the work going on right now is the interior fit out, is mechanical systems as well as the, um, the, the drywall work and partitions, of course. The pre-function space on levels four and five. Uh, one thing to take notice is the fact that um, all the um, vertical transportation elevators, escalators are 88% fabricated, as well as all the escalators has um, been fabricated and are currently on site. All the escalators have been installed with the exception of one, which will be installed within the next couple of weeks. The special event space, which is up on level five, the large um, uh, event room. Uh, as you can see, it's facing right now in the easterly direction. Um, what you don't see here is that because this is about a week or so old, is the fact that um, the panels are 50% installed. So the view that you've seen right now, if you go up and look at the site, it's 50% in, uh, impaired by the installation of the uh, of the panel system. Spray on fireproofing is in progress and right now the, right now the activity in that space is about 74% complete. Um, feel free to ask me any questions. I feel I, I'll be more than happy to answer them in any which way. Um, the enclosure is, uh, is on track. Uh, right now the curtain wall is 91% fabricated. The metal wall panels are 87% fabricated and in progress of being installed at the north side of the truck marshalling building. Precast panels are 99% fabricated and delivered to site and there's a few areas remaining left to be completed. One of the most obvious is the 12th Avenue uh, wall, um, the 12th Avenue uh, elevation. 
As I mentioned, interior fit out has been the key focus. So, so you can see some of the mechanical work ongoing within the third floor, um, within the third floor spine. The photo that you're looking at right now is, the, is one of the kitchen areas. The one thing you don't see is how far ahead the plumbing work has been completed because obviously it's been um, completed, tested, and buried behind the ongoing sheetrock process. And this is the roof of the truck mushroom building, which I mentioned uh, earlier in the first photo. This is where the pavilion will be eventually installed, as well as the farm and the greenhouse. Right now, the, the waterproofing is being installed in the areas not uh, in, uh, that will be impacted by the pavilion or the greenhouse. So we're progressing with the fireproofing work and preparing for um, the installation of the steel for the pavilion which is slated to start by the end of May, beginning of June. The majority of the pavilion has been procured, as well as the greenhouse, which was procured about a week or so ago, and is currently preparing for engineering. And with that, I'll take any questions. I think we're good right now. Thank you very much, Gus. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you, Gus. So, um, as Gus said, um, the figure, the latest figure is about 73% complete. And if you think of it like four year project, three, three years done, we're basically right on schedule for uh, finishing in the last quarter over the next year. Um, the, the next major milestone, which will be part of the critical path, would be the enclosures that Gus was talking about. We're going to make the building watertight um, between the, uh, the exterior skin and uh, certain roof elements. And that will, uh, I may have said this before, I know I've been saying it for a little while, maybe not to this group. Uh, making the building watertight obviously will make it weatherproof, which means that during the heat of the summer and the cold of the winter, um, we'll still be able to have moderate temperatures inside, which would um, which will make the, the conclusion of the interiors that much easier. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, the, uh, that enclosure is scheduled to happen uh, uh, late summer, early fall or so. Um, so that should be together. Um, the other thing I think I may have spoken about, but, but it's time to begin to speak about it, is that uh, Lindley's Turner will deliver this project in certain stages. Not everything will be done wrapped in a bow on March the 2nd. There will be certain elements that will be finished early, um, pursuant to the schedule uh, that has been in place for some time. The most important uh, and largest of those are going to be the truck marshalling garage, which will be finished at some point this fall. And it's anticipated that we, we CCDC, uh, will be able to deliver that to CCOC for them to begin using uh, uh, the facility uh, again sometime before the end of the year in advance of the uh, conclusion of the uh, project in its entirety. And there are several other pieces that we hope that will also be done early uh, uh, before the March uh, 2nd deadline of next year. Um, we are continuing to move through change orders. Um, you will recall that the, the, uh, the Lindley's Turner um, contract that was signed has a $50 million owner contingency and a $50 million FF and E contingency. Uh, we are spending against that $50 million owner contingency, including, as I like to remind people, <coughs> the pavilion and the farm are contingency items. They are over and above the base project because at the time we executed the contract uh, for purposes of um, cost containment, they were not part of the contract. Uh, we have since decided that they should be part of what we're, what we're accomplishing for OC. Um, and so we are trying to both put in that new pavilion and the farm uh, and, and, and yet maintain that within the existing $50 million owner contingency uh, that we had from the get-go. So Gus is working particularly hard on trying to make that happen on a daily basis. Um, and we, vo we, we voted on that, didn't we? Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, and then uh, the other thing, uh, you may recall about a year ago, um, we CCDC entered into discussions with Lindley's Turner to try to settle out certain outstanding claims. Uh, what we're trying to avoid is having a large amount of outstanding claims at the end of this process. Uh, we were successful a year ago in, um, in uh, negotiating about seven or eight million dollars of outstanding claims. 
Um, and the way that we did that, uh, again, going back to the contract that was previously approved, the contract called for uh, $12 million worth of potential completion bonuses. It had no interim bonuses attached to it. Uh, it's, it's clear, although we believe that we're on time, we expect that we're on time, uh, it's, it's not clear that Lindley's Turner will be able to actually um, hit any of the early completion bonus deadlines. So we have been discussing with them a year ago for a first settlement. We turned some of that completion money into an interim bonus money, which they which happened to be the superstructure, uh, which they met at the end of last year. So uh, we are again contemplating the same thing, taking certain uh, another certain portion of the completion money uh, that might not otherwise be awarded, uh, and turning that into a, a second interim bonus, uh, which would uh, largely match the. Um, the exterior schedule that we've been talking about, um, and again, the 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 the, uh, the, re the return to the taxpayer for that is uh, settling out a bunch of claims that are otherwise outstanding. Um, so we've been we've been trying to pull that together and expect to pull that together over the next uh, few year few months. Uh, excuse me, I should say few weeks. We're really trying to pull this together promptly. Um, and just so the directors understand, what the contract says about the completion bonus is if it's not earned, it comes back to the account of CCDC. So obviously we would be spending it for the, the construction project anyway. And uh, this is how we've decided is the, is the most appropriate way, both, both, uh, both to try to accelerate work wherever possible and to settle claims wherever possible. So I just wanted the board to understand that um, is an ongoing process. Hey, Robin, I got a question. I, prior yes. to the coronavirus, we were comfortable that the hotel tax was sufficient to cover all of this. Um, I know that we don't know yet how much effect the coronavirus is going to have on the hotel business, but yes. is anybody looking at that? Yes, there's a two-part answer to your question. The first part is remember that we have monetized the hotel uh, unit fee proceeds, that money is already in the bank. We are not anticipating an upturn or a downturn in the hotel unit fee as affecting our expenses. Okay. We have that in the bank. What, so the second part of my answer is, however, of course, that may affect bondholders. I, I am not suggesting that there is a bondholder issue. I believe there is no bondholder issue. Uh, there was, there were, uh, in addition to the pot of money that uh, goes to repay the bondholders, there were also secure, I call them rainy day funds. Pursuant, mm -hmm. to, pursuant to the bond prospectus, uh, the state was required to put aside certain rainy day funds as well. So between the pot that is, is uh, set aside for the bondholders and the rainy day funds, I believe that we are fine. But it is not a question of project expenses. We're monitoring the covenants that uh, go with those yes. bonds? Yes, of course. Yes. So, in conclusion, I would just say again that the base project uh, still looks on target for March of 21, um, and uh, and on budget, inclusive of the pavilion and the farm, which, as I said, Gus is trying to fit within our 50 million dollar contingency. And with that, I'm finished. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay. Robin, great presentation. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. Thank you for um, acting as uh, our chair, Michael. My pleasure. Oh, my honor. Um, unless there are any other comments or questions, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No? Okay. We stand adjourned. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone else. I, I know these are difficult times uh, to get personal meetings, and I appreciate everyone being here.